Well, obviously, an exciting Friday night. Um, it started off with just the atmosphere. I think that first and foremost, I know it was obviously a great game, and everything is better that ends the way you want it to end. Uh, but all in all, I mean, from the student section to the 40-some thousand that we had in the stands, to the game itself, I told our guys afterwards, it's not just the victory. Obviously, the victory is first and foremost and most important. But uh, the energy, the atmosphere in there that the, that the students created, that the fans created, and really that our team created. And because of the way they played, but also because of that sideline, I think is what made that so special. The win obviously cap capitalizes or caps off everything, but I want our guys to remember that it's not just about that. It's also about that energy, that atmosphere, the things that they really, really love and enjoy. Those are the things that they'll remember forever. Yes, the victory and things like that. But that's when the things really are starting to roll. And, and you feel the momentum and the energy, not just in the locker room, but in the community and on the football field and in the student body. So it's really, really special to have two guys, because of the weekend, because of the Friday night, be uh, players of the week in the, in the conference, with Jarrell White, uh, defensive player of the week, and then James Smith, a special teams player of the week. <clears throat> it's just a recognition. Uh, those guys did an un unbelievable job. But, the job that the entire team did. You know, to, to give ourselves a situation, James, to, to punt the ball inside the 10-yard line four times, to change really the complexion of the game and make them have to drive long distances because they, they are very explosive offensively. And then for Jarrell to come up with some of the plays he did, obviously the big pick down in the red zone. Uh, could have been a few guys. They could have obviously been players of the week, you know, with uh, Ahmad Gardner with the pick six. And, Cam Jeffries with a, with a pick, run back 57 yards, all in the red zone. Uh, there were huge, huge plays, but I think what that shows you is uh, those might be right there. Two of them were guys that maybe didn't start. You know, Mike Gardner and, and Jarrell, in some ways, would say, well, he's not a starter. Yeah, he is. You know, we, we've got maybe 17 starters in a lot of ways. And, and I think that's the way we look at it. And when you have those kinds of things, there's a lot of positives that are going on. That, that sometimes get overshadowed by just an incredible victory, uh, an incredible team win. But there's a lot of things, the selfless play of a lot of guys that uh, I think is what really makes me feel good about what's going on in this program and this team. Production-wise, would you say maybe Elijah Ponder might be going under the radar a little bit, but has been as important as anybody on the defense? There's no doubt. I know going into the season, everybody was looking to, hey, there's no way you're going to be able to replace Cortez and Cope. And, and we didn't want to say we were somebody that was going to replace those guys, but the ability for those guys to roll it was, it was a big deal. And Elijah's emergence, and I said it after the game, Elijah earned a lot of respect. And I don't just mean by the coaches, you know, and I don't just mean by the fans and the people out there that just read the stat line. I mean by the guys in this program, this team. The guy was elected the Iron Bearcat, which is one of the big awards in our program over the summer, the guy that really, you know, basically uh, exemplifies our culture every single day, coming in, working, and, and all the things they do throughout the summer, which is a grind and tough. And he won that because of his ability to affect others. And then he comes out this year, and obviously in camp, had an incredible camp, and, you know, continued to earn more and more and more playing time, and his performance has shown. And it's not just those performances on Friday night or Saturday that, have made him a big part of this team. It's probably his maturity and his ability to go through some adverse situations in our first two years here of not playing a ton and then all of a sudden working and working and merging uh, in the way that I would say you'd really like to see guys emerge is through a lot of hard work and some adversity because it means a lot more. With your young guys like Gardner and others playing so well <coughs> Friday night, how much does that increase your confidence in them already and then maybe give you some more options going forward for how you can use this guy? We know it does. We, we knew we had to in a, in a unique situation like that with the hurry up and the amount of plays that they were going to play. They had played a lot of ball, maybe not on Saturdays they played a lot of ball, but throughout camp uh, they played a lot of ball against a lot of good whiteouts. You know, we challenged them a bunch and, and those weren't guys that, you know, in the first three weeks of camp were kind of in the back burner and third team guys that didn't get a lot of reps and all of a sudden somebody gets hurt and they're emerged they're thrown into that. They've been kind of in the fire since we started camp, just the numbers we had at the back end in the corner position in particular, uh, and then their ability to play. So that's where you, you, you've gained a lot of confidence in them. Obviously, anytime a true freshman's out there, you got a little bit of you know anxiety as a coach, uh, just exactly when those big lights come on, what it's going to be like. And, and 
especially against a team like that with as much speed as they have, the shots are going to take. But I think their ability to do what they did in camp uh, has really, really helped us and, and really helped their confidence in a lot of things. I know you guys made some adjustments, but is it rewarding to play a team like that and show your players that you can still win with defense and running game, which has kind of been temples for you? You show that you can win with all three phases. You know, I think, yes, I think the defense, you know, in some ways you could say, hey, you played 58 snaps, you couldn't get them off the field in the first half enough. Yeah, you played really well in the rest of the you know, Maybe offensively we only had 20 some snaps and you know, four, three or four three and outs in the first half and didn't play as well. but. I think the ability to make some adjustments and adapt, and sometimes even your special teams got a whole other. The field goals were big for us. You know, we hadn't kicked a whole bunch of field goals this year, and you wouldn't say it. You know, sometimes the field goals, oh, man, we kicked a field goal. We, you know, we gave up four points there. But for us, in, in that game, in that situation, uh, to generate some energy through the field goal, uh, kicking, and not just it being three points. The way it goes through too is it means something. Gave us more confidence to continue to kick. And if we had to kick another one at the end of the game to win the game in a longer range, I'd have felt really good about it. So I think we all are gaining confidence, but I think you gain the most confidence in knowing that you got a lot of people behind you. If you're defense and you're struggling, you, you got confidence that your offense can put you in a situation. If you're an offensive struggling, you got confidence in your defense. If, you know, if you, ah, you, you don't score in the red zone, we've gained a lot more confidence right now and say, okay, it's, it's not the end of the world. We, we'll take the three points. Believe in, in what we're doing special teams wise as well. With Warren's run to the third quarter, it's kind of like a culmination. You guys started to get a little bit of a rhythm of running the ball. What adjustments did you make that allowed you guys to do that better in the second half? Well, I, I'd start with saying that I said, don't snap the ball. He <laughs> says, run the quarter out here. And, and no, no, we're good. We're, we're ready. I'm like, are you sure? Let's don't snap. Don't, don't snap. And then they snap the darn ball. And, 60 some yards later, there goes Mike Warren. So he created a lot of energy. So I'm glad they didn't listen to me right there on, on, at that moment. And maybe I was a little late at getting that in. But I think that I'm not saying that we made we went in the halftime and said, okay, here's the adjustments we're going to make. We're going to block it like this. We're going to go to this level. We're gonna, no, I think it's the combination of you know continuing to play hard. I think wearing people down. I mean, it wasn't some schematic that put us Mike one on one with you know the All American safety and. He's going to make you miss and, and go another 45 yards and make two other guys run into each other. If you think that we drew that up on paper at halftime and, and made some special adjustment, we're not that good, you know, but we believe in our guys. And, you know, there's little tweaks here and there that you do. And you keep giving those guys the opportunity. You keep believing in them that they have an opportunity, a chance to wear guys down. And if you can get some of these backs, Mike in particular, to the second level, he's going to make some damage. And on that run, when you guys were watching the film you came out on Sunday, did you point out Desmond getting down the field and kind of paving the way for him to gain those extra yards? Yeah. Oh, no, we, we, we watch more of those things than even, you know, the, the entire run of what it is. We look for O-line guys that are chasing the pile down. We look for O-line guys that are, you know, maybe driving a guy over a pile and finishing and those kinds of things. Uh, everybody's probably seen in the top ten of ESPN or whatever Mike's run, but they might not have pointed out the ability for Des that's down there trying to get a block. And, you know, some of the things that happened right there at the line of scrimmage gave him an opportunity to get, in the second, uh, get to the second level. Last week, you talked a lot about making this, this past game an event and building momentum on campus. It's <coughs> gratifying it's not to just get the wind touch on a little bit earlier, but just to see this city rally around this team and, and see a night like that. And probably, I haven't seen that at Denver. I have never. Um, you know, first week of the year uh, in UCLA was a really great atmosphere, a great night. On a Thursday night, which makes it, you know, even a little bit more special because I think that you can, you know, captivate some more people with not as much going on around. You know, originally going into it on a Friday night, I was not excited when the, when the game was announced because high school football is so important and so big here in, in our community is, and as well to our football program. But you know, we didn't get that choice. But to see the community, to see people kind of come out and ride, that's what I try to tell our guys that. When you're generating, you're creating something. It's not just the win. I know the win is the culmination of everything, and it's never as good if it's if it's not. But uh, to generate that kind of stuff and that kind of support is what I want for our program, which will continue to allow us to grow and our guys to realize that you know energy comes from all different places. You have to be cautious with, with your guys now, not be too high going on the road after after. Well, I, I'm hoping that 
plan on a Friday night gave us a Saturday where we had a chance to kind of soak it in and enjoy it. You know, players the same way as coaches. You know, the, the, then you can kind of get it out. It's tough if that was a Saturday night. <clears throat> you get done at midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. You get home, it's 3. The next day you've got to get up and move on, you know, watch it and then move on to the next opponent. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I'm hoping that, you know, our ability to, you know, have that day to kind of enjoy it a little bit, soak it in, and then realize, you know, that you've got to be able to move on to something that's going to be really good for us. I know you always say you live under a rock, but, did, you know, you were the stat that you start to hear a little bit more buzz over the weekend after how things went on Friday with the, the crowd and the result. I don't get out a lot, but I don't know that. All I know is that when you look up in that stands and, and, and you see what you saw, uh, and every time I watch the film and we review the film, and when you see the scoreboard, because they – the end zone view of the scoreboard and you see it completely packed and filled, that is what reminds me more than anything else, you know, whether, you know, what is written in the paper or what's on the news or uh, I think the ability for us to create <clears throat> an atmosphere and environment first and foremost for our university, for our students, I think that's when other things begin to follow and you got to give a lot of credit to them. If that student body didn't do what they did, I'm not saying we would have still won. But even to generate that much more energy into a stadium from week one, I think helps a lot of people continue to come back. Obviously the product on the field helps a lot, but it becoming an event in an atmosphere where it's really enjoyable, whether you're a diehard football fan or not, you know, you can get behind it. You've, you've played and coached in a lot of hostile environments. <clears throat> now that you've seen Nipper like that, where does it stack up in your mind? It's, it's up there. Uh, and again, I, I don't, some guys are saying, you know, it was so loud, I'm like, I don't know, I got a headset on. And all I know is I'm trying to scream to a guy and he can't hear me. I think, but what I felt was an energy. And it wasn't, it was an energy that started, I think, in the students and, and in the crowd. But there was a different energy even on our sideline. And I think, I don't know why, obviously because it's a big game, because we're playing well. But there was even something a little bit different. Uh, you know, I told the guys, that, you know, I don't say that's the greatest game. But I said the greatest thing that I remember in the what made it so special and one of the best for me is not just the victory. It's not just that there's 40-some thousand people there, but the energy that I felt, A, on the sideline, and B, in that locker room, is what's different. How'd you, feel, how'd you feel Harper and uh, McConnell did on that left side of the line? They did a good job. I mean, at, right after the game, you know, it was one of my first questions. I'm like, oh my gosh, how did, how did Biddy and Harper do it? My first call was, I, I didn't notice anything and in that way. It's got to be a very positive thing. As you go back and look at it, I think they did a really good job. I mean, that's a tough defense. Not that, you know, they're blitzing as much. They probably blitzed more the uh, Friday night than they do normally. But they got athletes all over the place. And you know, for us to be able to be successful, we'd like to say we had to run the football, but we had to make some plays down the field. And when you show the plays that are made down the field to some of those throws by Des, the biggest picture is that the pocket is clean. He had the ability to throw the one on Rashad, which is a long developing route on an over route early, uh, which was a huge throw, a huge play. And the pocket is really clean. And uh, I think those guys did a really good job. Is that, I know we've talked about continuity on, along that front five not being there, but is that maybe a side effect of uh, an ongoing position battle through training camp is that they had some reps with the first team? And it is, it is, and, and, and that's when the other guys got to step up too. The, the uniquely to me, more difficult thing is there was two guys that were side by side, you know. So now they're both kind of relying upon each other. Where, you know, had you know, Hart been next to you know, Morgan James, you might say, okay, you know, if in doubt, he you know, Morgan can kind of help him out, and, and vice versa with you know Vinny if he had been next. To, well, Matt's is still pretty young himself, but I don't know that he's going to help him too much. But even you know, by Jakari, so we put some pressure on to Jakari to to make sure that he can kind of be a rock there for those guys. Uh, and that's what you're excited about is to see a lot of young guys, not that Harp's a young guy, but he's a young guy in the sense he hasn't played a ton in Vinny's, you know, even though it was his third year, he's still a really young guy in his you know, playing time, just like those freshman corners, or just like some of those freshman DBs that are playing a lot on special teams, their ability when the lights come on to, to perform and not you know, go the other direction, I think is, is something that is really, looks really good and is really good for our program. Regarding pressure, how, is there any added to the fact that you guys come off a big win to go on the road and follow it up with another one? No, I, I don't. I don't really.
think there's that much difference, to be honest. I think getting over the, you know, obviously the thrill of victory and the euphoria and those kinds of things is, is the first. Um, but I don't, to, to do a repeat performance, it's not like we were sitting here, you know, preseason all this and, and you know, now you got to worry about some kind of, no, I just, I just think that, you know, we get our, keep ourselves in line for what's really important. And that's why, you know, yes, it's a great game, it's an exciting game, but, you know, put it with what it is. It's another one game, and yes, they're the best, and they've been the best in the league, uh, but it's another one game. And, and for our ability to put that behind us and continue to move on, pressure is what you make of it. Do you have any update on the health of those guys who missed on the O-line on Friday? Who's that? Cooper and Ferg. Uh, Coop will, will not make it back. I don't know that he'll make it back this year. Uh, and then Ferg, hopefully. We'll, we'll see. Today's Tuesday. You know, we'll go out there today. And, you know, he battled to get back last week, and you know, earlier in the week we thought he would make it. Uh, by about Wednesday, I didn't really think that he would make it, but you know, he was still battling to try and you know, taped it up there before to see if he could go, but there wasn't a way you know, he, he could help the team. So hopefully, we'll see. We'll see him out there today and see what he can do and see how he feels by Wednesday and Thursday. Last year, you guys go 11 and 2, get a big bowl win. Now you're 4 and 1. You the best and best of the conference over the last couple of years. Is this what you envisioned come to life in this program when you got here? Now you're seeing it kind of come to life. I think the first thing that you envision is the ability to do things together. And yes, the wins are what everybody outside gets noticed. But even after the first two wins, you know, they were two and one, it didn't feel the same way. And you can't say that UCLA wasn't a huge win. You can't say that beating your rivals for the 15th time in a row is not a huge win. Um, so. I always try, try to tell them at the beginning of the year, we don't let the outside de determine what success is to us. You know, we weren't successful last year just because we were 11 and 2. We were successful because of the way we did it. You know, to, to end it the way we did with you know, a senior quarterback that hadn't played all year, that stayed and stuck with it. And that's a sign that you know, it's a really good football team, whether they were 11 and 2 or 8 and 3 or 7 and 4. I mean, it, a really good football team that did things the right way. And I think. You know, where we're headed is, is that direction. You know, yes, we're four and one, and that gets noticed. But you know, where we were after week three, you know, even though you're th two and one, is a bit different than I think where we are with just the energy and the things that are going on. Did you get a verdict on Sauce's nickname? No, I, I let the players kind of do that. So as things happen today in practice and things like that, you kind of keep a little ear there to see. Uh, see what they refer to him as, and, and you know, A, he can't self-proclaim it. We can't give it to him as a coach. It's got to be something that's done within that locker room. We'll see. Fair enough. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks,